voices in my head, they counsel me, they understand, they talk to me. I didn't think I'd make a part two for this particular YouTuber, but sometimes I end up surprising myself. Well, let's sit back, relax, and see what this YouTuber has to say. All right, Jenny, show me what you got. Hi everyone, I'm the Amazing Atheist. In today's show, I have a guest who made a response video to my Anita Sarkeesian Utah massacre threat. Ah, shit, it's the brain enema again. Look, brain enema, I don't give a fuck about you anymore, so get the fuck off YouTube. The video I made. We made a few comments on a video in the most recent Drunken Peasant podcast, and I decided to have her on just to hash a few things out. Here's the thing. She could only join the show with me today if she wore a bikini and agreed to letting us install an arm on her tripod that would repeatedly flog her throughout the video. I'm not sure if this YouTuber is aware that the drunken peasants will never ask you to be no in nothing more in a, well in a bikini and <laughs> you do realize you could probably call the drunken peasants and debate them this should be interesting here is jenny mcdermott everyone jenny welcome to the show um, hi. So I wanted to begin with a clip from one of Anita Sarkeesian's videos. Women as background decoration. And then I want your opinion on it, along with five or six recently conducted studies that prove that what we are looking at is actually real. Ow, oh, okay! You know... I really think that the only reason that you're even wearing a bikini is because you know that your argument is full of shit. So what you do is put on a bikini and hope that every male YouTuber just likes you up, you know, gives you the thumbs up because I guess boys are so fucking stupid they just only pay attention to the boobs like, oh my gosh, she has such wonderful, beautiful boobs. Oh, oh man, I don't care what she has to say. I'm giving her a thumbs up. To examine how sexualized female bodies often occupy a dual role as both sexual playthings and the perpetual victims of male violence. Are you here for the whore? Are you me? I have your money. Let her go. No! Take it up with chairs today. I'm sorry, Mr. Ryan. I didn't know. I didn't know Fontaine had something to do with it. I, what? the murdered bodies of sexualized women with captions like, beautifully executed. Even in death, these lingerie-clad women are posed provocatively in a way designed to sexually arouse straight male viewers. We immediately notice that male characters are not displayed in sexualized clothing or positions. Maimed female bodies, on the other hand, are often fetishized and sexually objectified. Little known fact, very few people actually find dead women to be attractive. There's one less elf breeder in the world. A shame, though. Nice body on that one. She's still warm. How picky are you, anyway? In some of the most pernicious examples, dead or mutilated female bodies are used to decorate virtual game environments as a way to invoke a sexually charged, creepy mood or edgy atmosphere. And this also applies to men, too, you know. Considering the fact that you constantly kill many, many men in video games, bodies piling up, and you see bodies over there, over here. But apparently, that one corpse, that woman, that one woman there, is apparently meant to get a man's penis to get hard. Apparently. Where the fuck do you even get these facts? I want to know what proof 
and evidence you have that misogyny exists in the gaming industry. Now, do it now and uh, do it with a very short time frame or you're a liar and a Nazi. Okay. Well, I'm not Anita Sarkeesian, but I'll try to do my best based on a little research and some basic observation. So it is difficult to say whether or not the correlation between violent video games and actual violence exists because each study is specific in nature. A loud noise is played unexpectedly, a child is given a bowl of candy bars, some studies are conducted over the course of years, others are a very short period of time. But here are some truths about playing violent video games. An increase in bullying can be attributed to violent video games. A study conducted in 2008, yes, I know, six years ago, called Grand Theft Childhood, showed that 60% of schoolboys that had played games rated mature were found to have hit or beaten someone else up. Uh, that's a pretty big claim right there. Would you provide a link in the description, please? But I seem to remember that there was many studies around the time that Jack Thompson, you know, went around saying that video games brought violence towards people or whatever. And people have conducted research and they seem to have no link between playing video games and actual violence. In fact, if anything, it prevents people from doing violent acts because there's a few theories behind it. One of it is uh, because they're venting their frustration in video games. Thus, you can kill as many people as you want without any consequence. Two, um... There's this theory called time, the time theory, something like that, where an hour of playing a video game is an hour not killing someone. It's a theory, but it's a good But how I really want to know is how a video game can turn you into a misogynist, telling you that somehow women are the inferior beings. That is something that I really, really want to hear from you. Next! Video games reward players for simulating violence. A study by Tracy Diets called An Examination of Violence and Gender Role Portrayals in Video Games, Implications for Gender Socialization and Aggressive Behavior was conducted in 1998. I know, 14 years ago. But what were some of the most popular games sold and played at that time? Metal Gear Solid, Resident Evil, The Fifth Element, which I happen to think is awesome, but features a half-naked manic pixie dream girl. Tomb Raider, an extremely hot lead girl, and Rainbow Six. Oh, and don't forget about Spyro and Crash Bandicoot. Those two were the greatest mascots in history. Fuck Mario, fuck Sonic. We got Spyro and Crash the point is, games were violent and women were being sexually objectified. Everyone is objectified towards a certain extent. I own the original Tomb Raider. That's right. Take a good fucking look. The original Tomb Raider. Okay? <clears throat> and let me tell you something. First time I played a game, I didn't want to masturbate. I was eight at the time and i didn't want to masturbate i just want to play the fucking game and even if i play this game now i wish i could but i can't i don't want to masturbate towards lara croft i don't want to masturbate towards any woman whatsoever i don't find them sexually attractive i just want to play a fucking video game if i want to see some boobs i go to some fucking porn Diets shows that when violence is rewarded in video games, players exhibit in increased aggressive behavior compared to video games where violence is punished. The information that you're using is not outdated. It's expired. I mean, where the fuck do you even get this sort of stuff? Up next, violent video games desensitize players to real life violence. In video games, the players we kill simply disappear and the players have multiple lives. Bruce Bartholow, Brad Bushman, and Mark Sestier 
were published in the Journal of Experimental Social Psycho Psychology in 2006 with a study entitled Chronic Violent Video Game Exposure and Desensitization to Violence. Behavioral and Event-Related Brain Potential Data. The study showed that violent video game exposure is linked to reducing P300 amplitudes in the brain, which is associated with desensitization to violence and aggressive behavior. So let's take a look at this link between these recent teen killers and video games. Violent video games increase aggressive behavior as much as lead exposure decreases children's IQ scores. Where is the artistic value of shooting innocent victims? They put guns in the hands of little kids and teach them how to kill. I'm a professor of economics at the University of Texas at Arlington, and a casual gamer. I'm also a parent of children who enjoy video games, and I was curious to find out if video games could cause them to harm others. So I did some research. I conducted three studies to investigate the link between real-world video game usage and actual crime or fighting. These studies used different methodologies and different data sources and in all three cases, I found that more video game playing is actually associated with less real-life violence. That's right, less. A 100% increase in violent video game consumption led to a 1% statistically measurable decrease in violent crime. Okay, that's not a big decrease. But it undermines the claim that violent video games increase violence. So how could virtual violence decrease actual violence? One theory is catharsis, which is to say letting off steam. One might vent violent impulses through a video game rather than upon an actual person. Another theory has to do with time management. Even without a cathartic effect, every hour that people are sitting at home playing video games is an hour that they're not out on the streets getting into trouble. I'm not alone in my findings. Recently, other researchers have published findings that cast further doubt on the link between violent video games and actual violence. The video that you just watch is called, Do Video Games Make You Violent? Learn Liberty. The link is in the description. I suggest that you watch the full video. The reason that people believe studies like these to be untrue is because juvenile violent crimes have seen a decrease. This is believed by some to be caused by violent games providing an outlet to individuals with aggressive tendencies. It is also difficult to delineate between already violent people who are naturally attracted to violent games and violent video games creation of violent people. I got no fucking comment about that. Just stupid. That is why the debate is always, yes it is, no it isn't. Studies show there is a correlation, and some studies show no correlation. Each study is conducted differently. No. Wrong. This isn't even Anita Sarkeesian playing. Therefore, this is not real research. Did you yourself play the game? Let me ask you something. Were you there? Were you there? Nice straw man, where do you get it? From the 99 cent store? But no, seriously, are you trying to just make the amazing atheist look stupid by coming up with arguments that no one will ever fucking say? This is just another example of a feminazi getting it wrong. How? Oh, uh, it exists within these games, right? You are such a bitch. My thoughts, exactly. Don't you see that because it exists in a game, it doesn't mean that what you're seeing is an example of sexism? Don't you see that? Stop making YouTube videos and stop trying to outlearn me. She didn't even play the game. Uh, what? Nice editing error right there. And I'll tell you another thing. I'm extremely offended that you would use the smoking addiction as some form of defamation against me. As though it would dissuade my fandom in any way. Well, I wasn't. At this point, you're not even making any real arguments. You're just coming up with whatever comes out of your mind and then that's it. Seriously, if you were to make a video response to me, how much you want to bet that you're not actually, you're not actually going to address the criticism that I'm going to give you but rather dress up like me, wear a hat that's somewhat supposed to resemble my bomb hat, and then act incredibly stupid. Oh, 
You weren't. No, I was making a point about risk taking. I said that because you smoke, which has been proven to be harmful to your health and shorten your life, that you are a risk taker. And as such, that type of mentality would lead you to believe that Sarkeesian should have taken a risk in Utah. A great point was made on your video when a commenter said that Anita wasn't just endangering herself, she had the safety of all of those in attendance to worry about too. The person who wrote the threatening letter also threatened the lives of the people who would come to hear her speak. And in Utah, anyone can bring guns to public gatherings. Doesn't change the fact that death threats are still meant to scare people from doing anything. Very rarely, few people actually go with their death threats. Very few. Seriously, how many women who spoke out against the sexism in video games have actually died? None. So how would you ever know if it was the letter writer or not? I mean, I know about the letter because you read it in your video. So you know. Ugh, I hate you so much. You're such a stupid fucking bitch. How do you know with absolute certainty that the massacre was going to take place? Are you psychic? People who stage public attacks never discuss it beforehand because if they talk about it, then the shooting can never take place. Really? 9-11 was a mass killing that had forewarning. A website called Every Town for Gun Safety studies 110 FBI reports of mass killings that have taken place since 2008, six years, where each incident saw at least four or more deaths at the hands of the perpetrators. 13% of the attackers were female and 87% of them were male. Of the 33 incidents in public spaces, at least 18 took place wholly or in part where concealed guns could be lawfully carried. Elliot Roger warned that there would be a shooting. Michael Carneal told his friends that he was going to shoot people. Sayung Kui Cho, the Virginia Tech shooter, sent out a letter to NBC, but had addressed it wrong, so they didn't receive it until two days after the shooting. The Columbine shooters had a blog where the event was discussed. Jared Lee Lochner, Gabrielle Gifford's shooter, posted about his attacks on the internet beforehand and even suggested that Hillary Clinton was another target that he had in mind. Ted Kaczynski, the Unabomber, sent letters to the New York Times discussing his attacks. Timothy McVeigh, the perpetrator of the Oklahoma City bombing, the United States' most severe act of domestic terrorism, wrote a letter to a friend that blood would flow in the streets before his attack. I do not know any of these people. Would you like to provide a few links in the description? You know, just saying. Mm, let's see. I will have to ask this question yet again. How many women have died just because they spoke out against sexism in video games? You are a bitch, you're a big fat bitch, you're the biggest bitch in the whole wide world. You're the biggest bitch, if there ever was a bitch, you're a bitch to all that boys and girls. Look, where do you feminists get off trying to ban sexist books, movies, or video games? I don't want to ban anything. I just want to create supremely feminist friendly video games. And no one outside of the supremely feminist video game critics can criticize our supremely feminist video game. Consider this me helping to educate people on the violence that they are told that they like. You're doing a pretty shitty job doing it. If anything, it's people like yourself who are making people more violent. By the gaming industry executives. Becoming desensitized to violence against women should be of concern to everyone. But violence towards men? Pfft, fuck that shit. This is consumer protesting. If no one buys your crappy product, you eventually have to make a better product. If that's the case, you're not really helping. You're making things a lot worse. Oh man. It was so nice to talk to you about this. My stomach hurts. 
Oh good, the video is ending. My sanity is at its limit. I gotta go. Bye. Oh yeah. Oh. Did you like that? No. I didn't like that at all. You are truly disturbing. You need professional help. Oh god damn. Way to go to not only make uh, the amazing atheist look smarter than he usually does, but also to take a literal crap on your fucking video. Come. Wow, I, I hit the jackpot. I hit the jackpot of stupidity, ladies and gentlemen. Here, scratch your TV screen. You can smell it. It's smell a vision. No, thank you. You really are a bitch. So instead, how about these two big white middle fingers? You, you deranged human being. <coughs> I am the atheist gamer, and I think I need to drink some water. Peace the game out. If you enjoy watching this video, click on the like button, subscribe to this channel for more videos, and of course, you can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and ugh, Google+. We all know Google+, fucking sucks.